censorship resistance. The title doesn't suggest it, but this is actually going to be an, an MEV talk. Uh, so it turns out there's quite, quite a lot of intersection between uh, MEV research and censorship resistance uh, research. Okay, so just first of all, why is censorship resistance important? And uh, in my opinion, it's kind of one of the, the foundational pillars for, for systems like, like Ethereum to be successful um, in becoming uh, kind of settlement layers for, for the internet of value. And the reason is that there's this mimetic chain which starts with censorship resistance and ends with things that we really want. So what is this chain? Uh, it goes through credible neutrality. Without censorship resistance, resistance, you can't have credible neutrality. Without credible neutrality, you can't have legitimacy. Without legitimacy, you can't have this idea of monetary premium, which is um, you know, the asset maybe having value above and beyond its raw utilitarian value. And then without monetary premium, you can't have the, the, the trillions of dollars of economic security that we need um, and the trillions of dollars of economic bandwidth that we need in the context of, of, of DeFi. Okay, that's the only uh, motivation slide. I guess the rest is more uh, focused on, on, on the topic at hand. Okay, so first of all, I guess, what is, what is censorship? Um, I guess w one of the, the good things um, is that in Ethereum we have a, a very clean way of defining uh, censorship. And this is kind of an underappreciated uh, feature of EIP-1559, um, which is basically that with EIP-1559 we have dynamic blocks. What does it mean? It means that we have these, uh, the, this, this target uh, uh, gas price, uh, sorry, gas of, um, of 15, 15 million gas, and we have the, the, the gas limit, which is twice that. And, and blocks can vary up to, you know, the, the limit is, is twice the size of, of the target. And so what that means is that uh, most of the time there will be free and unused space in, 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 in the blocks. Um, and actually there's a statistic, which I, I, I looked up, which is that 80% um, of blocks have at least one million gas unused, and one million gas is enough to, to put through even some fairly large transactions. Okay, um, so we have uh, this free space. Why is it useful? And the reason it's useful is because if there's free space and simultaneously there is a transaction which is pending in the mempool and is not making it on chain, then that's kind of this, this uh, sign that there is censorship. And um, the reason is that as, as a builder, there's no reason why I wouldn't include this transaction, right? I have free space and it's a fee paying transaction, so I'm, it's my, it should be in my you know, rational best interest to include that transaction. And, and basically this is how we can just simply define uh, the censorship, which is the non-inclusion of transactions when there is available space. And I guess kind of two edge cases are like if the block is full, then that doesn't count as censorship. And the reason is that your, 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 your transaction might not be the, 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 the most valuable one to, to include right now. Um, and it's not sufficient to look at the tip. You also need to take into account the MEV. Um, so there could be um, transactions with, with lower tips than yours that are still getting uh, included um, before you. And if there's no um, block whatsoever, if it's a so-called empty slot, then that also doesn't count as censorship because basically the, the validators, you know, potentially offline. Okay, now one of the things that I think is important to, uh, to clarify in our mind is like these, these two different concepts uh, because people talk about censorship and they get the, the two concepts uh, mixed up. So there's this, this, this notion of weak censorship and this notion of strong censorship. And really, the, the topic of, of at hand today is, is weak censorship, but let's distinguish the two. So weak censorship is this idea that transaction, some of the blocks will be censoring. And so um, as, as, as a user, I kind of have to um, wait extra time for my transactions to get included on time. So not all the blocks are censoring, just, just a, a subset. And let, let's take an example. Let's say that 90% of the blocks are, are, are censoring. That means that the uh, average inclusion time for transactions goes up by a factor of 10. And so we go from you know, an average of 12 second inclusion time to 120 second inclusion time, which is roughly two minutes, um, which, is, which is kind of uh, suboptimal. Um, 
but, but in a way it's not uh, this other notion of censorship, which is strong censorship, where your transaction simply doesn't make it on chain. Um, and the, 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 the reason why there's this um, uh, separation is because the, the, the cause of, of the censorship is, is very, very different. So with weak censorship, it, it all comes down to block production, right? We have this very complicated pipeline or MEV supply chain um, that, that leads ultimately to blocks, and somewhere in this pipeline there could be censorship, and that leads to some fraction of the block censoring. Whereas on the other hand, strong censorship is something that uh, you know, originates from uh, attesters, um, and basically a 51% attack. So in this talk, we're gonna kind of ignore the, the, the strong censorship. Now let's look at the problems of weak censorship. One of the obvious ones is UX degradation. I want to make a transaction is being censored. I have to wait longer, which is obviously not 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 great. Um, but you know, even in this ex fairly extreme example that I gave, where 90% of the blocks are being censored, you know, in, in the case of Ethereum, you still get this this two-minute inclusion time, which is still five times faster than than Bitcoin. So maybe UX degradation is not so much of a of a you know a systemic risk. Um, I guess the other problem is, is this idea of um, extracting MEV by delaying transactions. So you might be delaying Oracle updates on chain. You might be uh, delaying uh, you know, liquidations, or you might be delaying some type of, um, you know, for example, if you want to like, pump a, a specific asset, you can just delay all the sell orders and only include on chain the buy orders. Um, and so that, that's something that we, that's, that, that's, that's not good. Um, and you know, something that's also very important to me is this kind of, this idea of perceived censorship resistance. Even though Ethereum itself is not censoring, it's kind of these individual participants in the supply chain that are censoring, it, it, it kind of, uh, people don't really make the distinction, and so they think Ethereum itself is censoring, and Ethereum itself is kind of losing this legitimacy, uh, which is not good. Um, and strong censorship is pretty obvious why it's bad. It just you know, breaks permissionlessness, self-sovereignty, and, and, and other things that we care about. And in terms of this, the solution space here, one of the reasons um, why I'm here, I guess, is because I'm very optimistic <laughs> about uh, being able to solve weak censorship. I, I, I think we have the technology, basically, to, to effectively you know, fully solve weak censorship. And this is what this, this, this talk is about. Uh, without any humans being in the loop, we're just Im incrementally improving these, these auctions that are basically the, the foundations of the block production process. Um, that, that, you know, today we, today we might have censorship, but you know, in five, 10 years, we, we, we just won't have this weak censorship. Okay, um, and I guess one of the interesting things here is that like a lot of the the, the, the tools that are going to present around solving sen weak censorship are actually tools that were developed in the context of MEV. So, for example, there's this um, gadget which is called MEV smoothing, and the reason why we, we researched it is we wanted to, to solve the reward volatility um, as, a, as a validator, because as a, as a solo validator, um, you know, every once in a while, maybe once every few months, you get really, really lucky, you get to build a block, and then you get to extract all the MEV in this, this, this one slot, um, and, you, and, and you make a lot of money um, in, in just a small amount of time, but that leads to very spiky returns. And the, the question was, can we smooth the MEV so that basically all the validators um, have this uh, non-volatile um, uh, re re rewards? Um, and it, it turns out that smoothing actually is a way to address propose a censorship, right? So um, it's kind of surprising that there's this connection between volatility and, and, and proposers, uh, but that's, that's, that's a, the, the way it is, and I'll explain it later. Another interesting thing is this idea of encrypted mempools. So those were uh, designed to try and prevent front running and like various forms of, of so-called toxic MEV, where basically you're in a way exploiting uh, the, uh, a user transaction. And it turns out that this can be used to address builder censorship, uh, which is kind of also this somewhat uh, maybe counterintuitive relationship. And then this, this, this idea of censorship resistance lists, 
which also address builder censorship. And you know, as I mentioned, it also addresses delaying, right? These, these kind of strategies in MEV where you're just delaying transactions. Okay, so let's kind of really quickly refresh this block production pipeline. It's been mentioned many times, but I, the, the, the way I present it is kind of a very linear uh, and, and may be useful. So it starts with uh, uh, the, the, the user. The user has some sort of intent, and they're, they're going to use an interface. That, you know, this could be MetaMask. It could be you know, Uniswap website. Um, and the, the interface is going to generate a transaction. The transaction is going to get broadcasted to the mempool. The searchers are going to see it. And they're going to include them in bundles. It could be even just one transaction bundles, which is basically just the transactions. Um, and then these bundles percolate to, um, to, to the builder. The builder produces blocks. Those blocks goes to the relay. And then the relay sends these block headers to the, to the proposer. And so I, I kind of, you know, some people call it like an MEV supply chain. I mean, I mentally think it more of a, as, as a linear, uh, clean pipeline. Um, and then basically the, the, the question is, you know, there, there could be censorship at, at every layer of the stack here. And like, how do we address every, every single layer? The, 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 the user, um, this is something that we don't have too much control over because basically it, it, it's the, the foundations are in civil rights, like the, the, the right to, to property, like property rights, for example, or freedom of speech. If you live in a country like, like North Korea, then, you know, um, censorship resistance is not even an option to you because you're censored at this kind of, this, 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 this top layer. Um, in terms of the interfaces, you know, I think I'm optimistic that we can get censorship resistance through technologies like ENS, uh, you know, avoiding the dot-coms, um, things like IPFS, um, you know, avoiding AWS, and, uh, you know, technologies like the graph as well, which I hope to become, um, you know, de decentralized. Um, searchers, in my opinion, are not too much of, a, of an issue just by design, right? Like the searchers, what they do is that they observe the mempool and their job is to order and insert transactions. It's not really to, to remove transactions. Like once the, the transaction's been broadcast, there's no kind of way for the searchers to, 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 to just remove it because the main thing they're doing is, is observation and insertions and ordering. Uh, but the, 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 the builders and the relays can censor, so let, let, let me uh, skip those for now, and, and, and work backwards to the, the, the proposer. You know, as I mentioned, smoothing is kind of this way to effectively completely remove proposer censorship from the equation. And, it, and the way it works is basically it, it canonicalizes block production. Um, so what, the proposer basically has no choice in selecting a block, he must choose the highest bidding block, and that removes kind of any discretion that the proposer might have in censorship. I'm going to discuss this a bit more later. Relays, they're just a, a, a temporary piece of infrastructure. They're going to go away with uh, so-called enshrined PBS or native PBS. And so really, like, the, the, big, the big problem here to, to try and, and address is, is, is builder uh, censorship. And we have these two technologies, which I mentioned, which are encryption, namely encrypted mempools, and to this idea of inclusion lists. But before like, going, diving into the fancy stuff, let's talk about like, super low-tech um, you know, technology to, to address uh, censorship, which is what I call altruistic self-building. Is this idea that you just build blocks um, in the same way that, um, that blocks used to be built you know, in the early days, uh, where you, know, you just have GEF or some other execution client naively um, you know, order the transactions in the mempool uh, by, by tip, and then that's how you build your, your block, uh, you know, even as a, as a solo uh, validator. And the nice thing about altruistic self-building is that there's no censorship. Um, and uh, Moreover, there's, there's no, like, uh, no sandwiches, and there's, um, there's just much, much less toxic MEV. And the reason is that um, if you're working directly with this public mempool, sandwiches 
um, have this issue where th they can themselves get sandwiched. And so if sandwichers use the, 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 the public mempool, they are actually exposed. You know, there's this like salmonella attacks and whatnot. Um, and so there's not only are you, are you, are you kind of <laughs> addressing censorship, but you're also uh, you know, partially addressing this, this toxic MEV problem. And, you know, this, this kind of leads to, to good vibes um, in, in, in the short term. And so this is, you know, one of the reasons why um, I, I intend to be self-building, at least in, in the early days. And, you know, there is a sacrifice. You know, this is where the word, word altruistic comes in. It's like there's this financial sacrifice that you're making, which is that you're um, reducing your income as, as a val validator, you might lose, you know, this 1% this extra, uh, you know, a APR, you know, you might go from 6% uh, to only 5% APR. But uh, ironically, this might be a rational move, uh, kind of financially. And the reason is that if many, many people are, you know, spreading these good vibes uh, by self-building, well, the, the value of your, of your 32 ETH uh, you know, a principle might, might go up. Uh, and so, you know, you're, you're sacrificing a little bit of income, but you're basically potentially increasing the, the, the monetary premium of, of the asset that you're staking with. And, and then maybe another rational reason to, to, to be self-building, at least in the early days, is that, um, you know, if, if you're not running infrastructure like, like, like MevBoost, then, you know, you won't be exposed to, to, to bugs, software bugs, uh, in, in, in the PBS infrastructure. Okay, but that, that's kind of the only piece of, of short-term stuff. The rest from now on is gonna be kind of long-term fundamentals thinking. So I mentioned this idea of smoothing. What is it? So just as a quick recap, we have this market of builders. They produce blocks. Some of them are censored, um, and some of them are, are, are not. And the proposer has full discretion to choose which blocks they, 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 they include. And one of the things that they can do is say, as a proposer, I only want to be working with builders that are compliant, let's say. Um, and so the, they will be focusing um, their attention on, on these blocks which have uh, censorship. Uh, the idea of MEV smoothing is that we're going to basically ask the proposer to take all the blocks that are being built by builders and to order them uh, by, um, by the, the, their bid. Basically, every block has a bid, which basically says how much money the proposer will earn um, if they include the block. And so, we, in a way, we're kind of forcing the proposer to maximize their own revenue, uh, which a, a rational proposer could, uh, you know, sh should be doing. And the way that we enforce that is actually with attesters. So we ask attesters to do the exact same thing, to observe this block building market, to order uh, by bid, and to only attest to the block that the proposer chose if that happens to be the highest bidding um, block. And so if the proposer chooses one of the censored blocks, which is not at the very top, um, then that block wouldn't uh, make, it, make it in the canonical chain. So here, there's only one choice, one arrow that the proposer can, can, can choose. Now, the, the other technology um, is encrypted mempools. And you know, now that we've kind of fully addressed, in a way, the, the problem of, of, of proposers, let's look into builders. And encrypted mempools is like a surprisingly simple idea, which is that you have a transaction, um, and, and before you broadcast it on, on the public mempool, you encrypt it. And so that gives you a sense of privacy while your transaction is in the mempool. Um, the second step is that your encrypted transaction gets included on chain. It gets decrypted after it's included on chain. Um, and then it, it also gets uh, uh, executed. And so you can see here like um, this idea of, of en 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 encrypting the transactions make it, makes it more difficult to censor because um, the, 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 the process of block building is all about the second step, this inclusion step. But the, those who are participating in block building doesn't, don't have information about the content of your transaction, and so you're making it harder for them to, to, to censor. And so basically there's this, this two-step two process, off-chain and on-chain, 
and the on-chain stuff can all happen in one single slot, so that doesn't actually affect the user experience in terms of adding additional latency because it all just happens in, in, in one shot. Now, why is encrypted mempools important? And, and, and basically, when it comes to censorship, and the reason is that it, it fundamentally changes the economics of censorship. So let's take the perspective of a censoring builder. Um, I have, there are various types, of, various types of transactions that come in. There's transactions, at the, uh, the green ones, where I could have an edge as a builder over other builders. Like these, this is where like, all the sophisticated MEV lies. It could, you know, it could be the sandwiches, it could be the arbitrage, whatever. Then there's what I call neutral transactions. Neutral transactions are transactions where extracting the maximum amount of MEV is trivial. And that includes, for example, transfers, ERC20 transfers, ETH transfers, uh, NFT transfers. And the reason is that um, you know, the only amount of MEV is the tip. There's nothing more to extract. And so you're going to be equally as competitive, including those transactions, versus um, other builders. And then from the perspective of a censoring builder, there's basically this economic handicap, which is that if you've chosen to not include certain types of transactions, you're not going to be able to benefit from the tips that these transactions provide, and so you're going to be economically handicapped. And, you're, and if you remember with, um, with MEV smoothing, we're kind of trying to include blocks that maximize uh, MEV, and so being handicapped puts you at, at, a, at a fundamental disadvantage. And so like the, 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 the simple equation here basically is that we want to be looking at the, the difference between the edge and the handicap. We want the edge to be as small as possible and the handicap to be as large as possible. Um, and ideally, we want for censor, uh, censoring builders for the handicap to be larger than the edge. And if that's the case, then it doesn't even make sense to like rationally to, 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 to be participating in block building because you'll just be losing money all the time. Now, um, pre-encryption, like the, 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 we could expect that the, 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 um, the fraction of transactions that are being centered is tiny, let's say only 1%. And so your handicap is really, really small. And so that's not, that's not much of a, a handicap, which is bad. Um, and like one of the things that we want to do is basically uh, increase that handicap. Okay, so one of the things I, I want to highlight here is that there's, there's two types of edge transactions. There's um, basically uh, transactions, uh, MEV opportunities that arise from the environment. They're just available in, um, in, in a latent fashion, and, and that's things like arbitrage. You know, it, they don't require a user to make an action for MEV to be uh, extracted. And then there's this second type of, of, of uh, you know, fancy MEV, which involves specifically analyze, you know, reacting to a user transaction and, and, and front running them. And basically what I'm arguing is that encryption does two things. One is that it dramatically, you know, by roughly 100x, increases the handicap. And it also reduces the edge that a builder can have. And so like, there's this rough, let's say, by a factor of two. And so there's this roughly like 200x improvement in, in, the, in, in the economics of, of censoring uh, builders. Now, the reason why the handicap grows by a roughly a factor of 100 is because um, as a censorer, um, I don't know uh, which, 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 transaction, which encrypted transactions I need to censor. And so I need to go censor all the encrypted transactions. I'm kind of forced all or nothing. Either I include all the encrypted transactions or I include none of them. I can't just discern which of the encrypted transactions I do want to censor. Um, and so if, if I am going to censor, I need to basically forego um, all, all, all this bottom part uh, uh, of the block and have a huge handicap. Um, and in terms of the edge that I could have, um, I have to basically forego the, I, my edge is reduced because um, I can't see the content of, 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 of user transactions, and so it makes it very, very difficult to do these, these, these sandwich attacks. Okay, great. Um, now, I, we've, we, we, it's, 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 it's all well and good to kind of work at the economic layer and really economically force out censorship, 
but what if we're in a very, very extreme situation where every single builder uh, you know, happens to be censoring? And here, this is where we're, we're introducing this notion of transaction inclusion lists, which is basically a constraint that the proposer is setting on the builder, and it's a constraint that's kind of enforced on chain. So the, the, the proposer says to the builder, hey, I want these specific transactions to be included on chain. I believe these transactions are being censored. And the builder has no choice if they want to have their block be included on chain to respond with a block which contains these kind of mandatory transactions. And so, so long as we have a minority of proposers that are willing to not censor, um, then we'll be in a position where uh, at least some fraction of blocks will be non-censoring, even if 100% of the builders uh, are, are censoring. And that's the end of the, my talk. Um, there's this whole other topic of strong censorship, uh, but not the subject of today. And thank you. Hi. Hi. Quick question. Um, how do you think about uh, block, spa block space markets potentially enabling weak censorship via toxic MEV? For example, you could propose uh, multiple full flashbots blocks in order to exploit a TWAP oracle, which may not be totally economic, but with like stuff like block space futures markets, you could definitely see it happening. Are there tools to mitigate against that, or is that not as big of an is issue as I think? Right. Um... So one thing that does help on the whole multi-block MEV story is this idea of single slot finality. And that helps uh, kind of r removing reorgs. Um, and that's one way to kind of get these, uh, these multi-block uh, MEV opportunities in, which we kind of remove. Um, and that's arguably like a, a form of, 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 of weak censorship. Um, now, um, in, in, in terms of, I guess your question was about fu future blocks, not, not so much about reorgs, but yeah. like looking into the future. Well, more just like futures markets for block space. Right. Um, now, w one of the, I guess, features about the, 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 the beacon chain is that um, we, we kind of, the proposers, so the, yeah, the proposers know in advance that they're going to be proposers, mm -hmm. unlike proof of work. And so that's actually one of the fundamental you know, um, security degradation, degradations versus, versus uh, uh, a proof of work where you, you, you fundamentally don't know even, even, even if, e even the, the proposer himself doesn't know that he's going to be the next proposer. Um, to be honest, it, it's a good question. I, okay. I don't have like a, a you know, a, a good answer off the top of my head other than, I guess, it's a battle to be fought at, uh, first of all, at the application layer, mm -hmm. right, to make sure that you're minimizing the, 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 the MEV, um, but also, like, uh, en encryption, you know, at the protocol layer, making it much, much easier for applications to design applications that, 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 that don't uh, lead to lots of MEV and, don't, and therefore don't give a lot of leverage to people who want to exploit these futures markets. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, that, make, that makes perfect sense. Thanks for the answer. I mean, the other thing maybe worth mentioning is that if it, it, it's possible that the, the, the inclusion list kind of throw a wrench in, you know, in, in the whole mechanism because uh, that, that's kind of maybe a source of uncertainty. I guess maybe the proposers can pre-commit to not using inclusion list, so maybe that's easy to, 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 to work around. Hmm. Yeah. Hi, great talk. I was just wondering whether the encrypted mempool requires redesigning the transaction fees that are paid by the users. Yeah, it, it, it does. So basically, you, you need to solve the denial of service problem with, with, the, with the encrypted mempool. And so basically, you need to have a, a zero knowledge proof that you have enough funds to pay for the, for, for, for the base fee. Um, and, and, and yeah, this can totally be done. And another thing that, that that kind of needs to be done is that um, you need to pay for the base fee uh, regardless of whether or not the, um, the transaction is valid once it's decrypted. So, so um, yeah, um, it, it is t definitely possible to do. And actually, I have a, a whole talk on, on like all the complications of actually implementing, implementing that.
Um, so you can find it online. Uh, I think it's called MEV and cryptography. Okay, cool. And one more thing. So for the inclusion in the block, uh, in terms of gas, do you need to make it available in the unencrypt, like in the unencrypt, uh, in the encrypted version of the transaction? I mean, because you have to know how much how much transactions you can add to the to the block. So you need oh, to know right, the right, gas right. cost of the of the transaction. Yeah, you do the gas limit. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's a good question as well. Like, um, there's, there's there's various designs here, but one one of the things that you can do is basically um, just simply make the gas limit public. But then the question is, you know, does this gas limit leak information? And so one of the things that you can do here, for example, is just um, f force you know very low granularity on the gas limit. For example, it has to be a power of two. Um, and so like the, the gas limit falls within a, uh, um, one of a few cho uh, choices. Like you can also use like very, very uh, fancy cryptography like, like uh, fully homomorphic encryption to basically work on the transactions themselves to, 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 to build blocks in such a way that the transactions don't leak their gas limit and are still within the gas limit of, of the final block. Great, thanks. Um, so I guess you can imagine that part of a builder's edge might be like being really good at ordering, ordering transactions, right? Like let's say you have a lot of- So can you speak a bit louder? Sure, I was saying like part of a builder's edge might be really being really good at ordering transactions. So you could have like a lot of like large buy and sell orders, for example, with like some limit price and if you're a really good builder, you might like alternate them so they all work and they all succeed. But if everything is encrypted and like you like order them in the you know some average way, then like a, a few of them will succeed and like you'll kind of like destroy a lot of value by like not ordering things properly, right? Uh, I, can you, sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry. So like, um, let's say you have a bunch of mempool transactions that each want to like... So a, bit, a bunch of what? Can you speak slower as well, please? You have a bunch of mempool transactions yeah. to buy and sell like something, and they all want to like... They each want to like buy and sell some, something. Um, and if you're a builder, like maybe your edge is being really good at ordering these transactions, so you like order the buys and sells so that you have like buy, sell, buy, sell, and they all succeed, right? If they're encrypted, you give up all of this, right? So like you end up with some average ordering, in which case like some small number of them will succeed. So, so one of the things worth mentioning, I guess, is as a builder, you know, part of the transactions will be like totally unencrypted. There will be your transactions that you put at the very beginning. There will be your, your priority transactions. And so if you're only doing arbitrage, um, then like encryption like, changes nothing. Um, like the, really tr uh, encryption only helps whenever you're dealing with user transactions that are being exploited. Um, yeah, I'm saying these are user transactions. User transactions, okay, yeah. Okay, I'm out of time, but ha happy to discuss this with you. Um.